Okay, welcome back in my quack shots. We're back with some more Genji Impact and today we'll be talking about Ganyu. So we'll be jumping and deep diving into Ganyu's kit, how to play your team compositions, west weapons and artifacts. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So Ganyu is a 5 star cryo damage dealer. He can also be played as a support, but I feel like you're most likely playing her as a DPS. In terms of Ganyu's kit, she has normal attacks and her charged attacks and plunge damage. Ganyu is a charge shot damage dealer, most of her damage will come from her charge shots. This is Ganyu's elemental skill. Her taunt skills run Ganyu's max HP. It also does two procs of damage, the initial damage and the summon damage at the end of the skill. So it will burst if the enemies do destroy it. This is Ganyu's elemental burst. It does cry damage in a circle area around her. Enemies that are within her field will also take chrono damage. Ganyu's first passive undivided heart. When you fire your first charge shot, your subsequent frost flick arrows will give you an additional 20% crit rate for 5 seconds. Her second passive, Harmony Between Heaven and Earth. Your Celestial Shower, which is her elemental burst, will give you an additional 20% cryo damage bonus when your characters are within your AoE. Her last passive will give you a refund of 15% towards crafting bow type weapons. So if you do plan on making a crest in your home at Yumi, you will get this passive. In terms of priority, level up her charge shots, so that's number one. Second is her elemental burst, and third is her elemental skill. If we take a look at Ganyu's multipliers, she has a 230 percent multiplier on her initial frost flick arrow. In addition, she does get a 392% um damage as well, so this is totaling 622%. Her charge shots are about, I want to say give or take a 2.5 seconds load up time, which can be slightly shortened depending on your animation cancelling, which we'll get into shortly. So her elemental skill has an irritated HP of 255% at level 13. The skill damage is 281%, the duration is 6 seconds, and the cooldown is 10 seconds. Her burst is a 149% multiplier at level 13, at level 10 it's 127. Her elemental burst is 100% uptime, 15 seconds cooldown, and 15 seconds uptime. Let's take a look into Ganyu's constellations. Ganyu's level 2 charge shots will reduce your enemy's crown resistance by 15% for 6 seconds. You also get energy particles per level 2 charge shot. So her C1 is really really good. Honestly, if you do plan on pulling for Ganyu, and if it, this is within your budget, I would definitely try to get her C1. Her C1 is just completely insane. So again, I would definitely recommend her C1. She does work perfectly fine at C0, so do keep that in mind. Her C2 will give you an extra taunt, so you have another taunt to anchor the enemies, also result in more energy particles to generate for your ult. Her C3 is plus 3 talents on her burst, so this is pretty straightforward. Her C4 will increase the damage taken of the enemies that stand within your crime field. Enemies within the field will take increased damage over time for 3 seconds. So basically, it starts at 5% and will also increase damage over time for 3 seconds. Her C5 is plus 3 talents on her elemental skill. So this is her most broken con Constellation. If you're planning on getting this constellation, then I'm not sure why you're watching this video. Whenever you use your elemental skill, it would allow you to instantly fire a charge shot as long as it's within 30 seconds. I recommend you start off with Blizz Glad Scent, so 2 piece Blizz and 2 piece Gland. Remy can work as well, so I feel like this is the standard for uh, a Ganyu build. So, this is my definite recommendation if you are starting to plan out on farming for Ganyu. If you plan on running Freeze Ganyu, I'd recommend you run 4 piece Blizz Destroyer. The 4th piece set will give you 20% crit rate when enemies are affected by cryo. In addition, enemies that are frozen will yield another 20% crit. So in total, it is 40% crit rate, which is absolutely insane. So this is a good set to run for Freeze Ganyu. For Freeze Ganyu, I would suggest you run Attack Sands, Cryo Damage Goblet, and Crit Damage Circlet. As you do, you get the 40% crit rate boost from the 4 piece set bonus. Okay, so for Melt Ganyu, the best set is definitely 4 piece Shimanawa Reminiscence, so aka Remy. You will get 18% attack from the 2 piece set bonus. In addition, every time you use your elemental skill, you will also get a 50% bonus to your charge shot damage. This set is really, really good on Mel Ganyu, as you won't be using her, your burst as much as it will affect your power applications with her burst. So ideally, you will use your elemental skill, which is her Shrill of Shillin, and you will get that damage buff from the 4 piece set bonus when you're trying to proc your melts with Ganyu. So this is definitely the number one option for Melt Ganyu. Okay, so in terms of 4 piece Wanderer's Troop, this set is not really that easy to farm, so do keep this in mind. So again, I would try to farm more so of a Blizz or Glad Scent with Remy. Either or could work for a standard build. If we do have some Wander pieces landed lying around, these are also a good option to use for your Ganyu as a more universal build. This set can be used for both Melt and Freeze Ganyu. So this is a very, very valuable option as well. So let's talk team compositions. In terms of Freeze Ganyu, one of her best comps is Morgana Comp. The original Morgana Comp was Ganyu, Mona, Dayona, and Venti. 
If you don't have Mona, you can use characters such as Kokomi if you do have her. The Kokomi is a viable option as well. You can also use Shingshu as well if you do have him. Do keep in mind using Shingshu with Ganyu that you will have to weave in autos as the rain swords from Shingshu's burst will only proc from Ganyu's auto attacks. In terms of the third slot, I'd run a cryo character. It'll help battery your Ganyu and give her cryo resonance. Cryo resonance will give you a 15% crit rate on cryo affected or frozen enemies. So I feel like the Yona is one of the best free up options if you do have her. Shenna is also a good option if you have her, and her icy cool stacks will also boost her overall team's damage. If you don't have the Yona or Shenna, Rosori can help buffer your team's crit rate with her passive alongside power resonance and battering the team. So if you don't have Shenna and if you don't have Diona, Rosaria is also a good option. For the last character, I would recommend an animal character. They'll be on the team to VB shred and amplify your cryo damage. You can use Venti, Kazra, or Sucrose, they're all good options for that last slot. So if you have any of these characters, I would ideally use one of these three. Melt Ganyu is also another Ganyu comp that revolves around Ganyu proccing melts. Ganyu and Shangling and Bennett and Zhongli is a very very common variation of this team comp. If you don't have Zhongli, Sucrose can work too. All the variations of Ganyu melt comp includes Ganyu, Kazwa, Bennett and Zhongli. This comp will give you a little more safety with Zhongli's shield. Also Bennett and Kazwa can apply power so that your Ganyu can melt. With the recent addition of Shenna, Ganyu, Bennett, Shenna and Kazwa is also another viable option. So if you do have Shenna, you can slaughter in this team comp too. I feel this one's more situational though. Okay, so let's jump into her weapons. So we have Amos, this weapon is broken on Ganyu, so this is pretty straightforward. We also have Thundering Pulse, which is a good option if you don't have Amos. The crit damage stat will also ease the pain of Artifact RNG. Pain. You have Hamayumi and Prototype Crescent. In terms of these two bows, in general, I would use the Crescent in the free setting, and I'd use the Hamayumi in the melt setting. With the Hamayumi, you will get an increased damage bonus on your charge shot damage when your energy is at 100% from its passive. Prototype Crescent is also good, it will boost your movement speed by 10% and your attack percentage by 36%. Honestly, I can't really recommend this weapon, especially this being a battle pass weapon. I would just stick with the Prototype Crescent or the Hamayumi, there are much better choices. So we're going to pretend I have the Black Glyph. If you do have this weapon, it's also a viable option. In addition, if you do keep up the stacks, as you do get 3 stacks on this weapon, it can also rival 5 star weapons. Okay, so we're going to pretend that we have Polar Star as well. So Polar Star is another good option on Ganyu if this is what you have. It can work both in the melt and in the free setting. So in terms of the Polar Star, you will get stacks depending on the actions you do. So basically, you get 4 stacks when you do normal, charge attacks, elemental skills, and your elemental burst. So you will get an attack percentage buff based on your refinements with the Polar Star. So this is as well a good option on your Ganyu. Skyward Harp is also a good option on Ganyu. You will get crit rate on the innate stat in addition to the crit damage in the passive. If you already have high refinements on your Hamayumi or Crescent, I'd honestly just recommend using these over the Harp, unless your artifacts require the leisure of the Harp's double crit stats. Let's talk about how to play Ganyu and how to use your charge shots efficiently. So if we take a look on the left, Ganyu's hard scope versus the right where we are aimed cancelling. So you should be able to see the difference between the aim cancelling charge shots, it is slightly quicker. The way to achieve this is to basically aim by using your left click. Then you want to right click to animation cancel, which would be the aim mode key. And then you want to dash cancel. It'll help you be more mobile and you'll also get iframes when you dash as well. So I would definitely recommend doing your aim canceling on Ganyu. Now for the bow comparison. Here are my Amos stats, I have 2.2k attack, 183 elemental mastery, I have R2 Amos, and 4 piece wanderer's troop. Here is the flower, plume, the sands, the goblet, and the circlet. Constellation 6, there are the talents 10, 13, 13, so here are the stats, 68 crit rate, 194 crit damage, 109 energy recharge, and 46.6% cryo damage bonus. Alright, so now we're at the Volan damage testing Amos, so as you can see we're doing 31.6k blooms, which is really really good. Alright, so now we're on Thundering Pulse, so we have 1.8k attack and 183 elemental mastery. We have 68 crit rate and 260 crit damage. Okay, so we're back at the Volan, so as you can see we're doing 24.9k bloom damage with Thundering Pulse, which is very very nice. Okay, so we have R1 Skyward Harp, our attack is 1.8k, 
and our elemental mastery is 122. So we're on 4 piece wanderers, do keep in mind that I will be swapping back and forth between both circlets, so do keep that in mind. We have 73.7% crit rate and 253.7 crit damage. Okay, so we're back with Skyward Arp, so we're doing 23.4k blooms, which is very very nice. Do keep in mind that we are using a crit damage circlet with this harp, so there is a variance between stats. So we're now using the Puritip Crescent, we have 1.9k attack and 183 elemental mastery. The artifacts are the same, so we are using the crit rate circlet, so we're, we're at 68 crit rate and 194 crit damage on Crescent. Okay, so do keep in mind that this damage is without the Portep Crescent passive, so we're only doing 20.4k blooms. Now I'd like to show you the damage of Portep Crescent including the passive. So if you can see here we have 1.9k attack, so this is the bloom damage again without the passive, so now we have 2.2k attack with the passive, so now we are doing 24k bloom damage with the passive. So we're on Hamayumi, 1.9k attack, we have 183 elemental mastery. We are back on the OG Wanderer's troop set, so we're 68-194. Alright, so this is the damage with Hamayumi. Do keep in mind this is the damage with the passive up, so we are doing 23.2k bloom damage. Okay, so this is now the damage without the Hamayumi passive. So we have no energy, so there is no passive with the Hamayumi. So now as you can see, we're doing 21.9k bloom damage, which honestly is not that big of a difference if you ask me. Okay, so let's talk Ganyu Freeze Comp Rotations. So in the standard Morgana Comp, usually you would have either Ganyu or Diona apply Cryo onto the enemy, then you'd have Venti use E and Q, so his elemental skill and burst. His burst would scroll Cryo, and then you'd go to Diona, usually holding 4 Pistol Blast, which would buff the entire team's uh, damage, and then you'd go to Mona, who would apply her elemental burst and E, elemental skill. Basically, Mona here will give the omen buff, and it does get extended when enemies are frozen. So do keep that in mind, and then you use Ganyu's burst to get that overall cryo damage bonus for your team. So this is just pretty much the standard rotation for Ganyu Freeze Comp. Okay, so we are back with one of Ganyu's standard melt comps. Zhongli is here as a form of consistency, so you don't get stunned and staggered, as well as you won't take much damage from Zhongli as his shield is broken. So in terms of this comp, basically what you need to do is just drop the Bennett ult, and then drop Shangling's ult inside the Bennett ult as Shangling does snapshot. This means that if Bennett's ult does end, Shangling will still get the entire Bennett buff on her elemental burst. Then you would just use Ganyu to proc melts. Okay, so we are at the end of the video, so hopefully you guys all enjoyed this uh, showcase of Ganyu and how to build her. So if this did help, do let me know in the comment section below. Let me know if you are pulling for Ganyu, and if you are, I do wish you the best of luck. So yeah, hopefully you guys did all enjoy, and yeah, I'll see you guys all in the next one. We just gotta grind for that paycheck. Mama told me one day I'll be famous. Remember when she used to say she hated us. That ended with life when I say shit. Now I'm inside all them people's playlists.